Hello and welcome to In the Envelope, an awards podcast. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage. I'm here to give you a front row seat to the industry's most exciting awards races. Who is in the running? What makes awards worthy film and television? How can you, listener, win a statue of your own? We're sitting down with actors to get that insider's perspective on these questions and more. And maybe, just maybe, we'll get a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. For me, it is about following the fear, knowing it's there, not feeling like you have to be without fear, knowing that it's always there, but being fearless in the face of it, unraveling what it is and why why this this thing is making you afraid and, and going into that and exploring it because acting is a safe place to do that. Jamie, talk to me about Orphan Black. Well, it's a tour de force mm. of acting mm. by Tatiana, who is our guest today. <laughs> yes, indeed. She was just here, yeah, talking about playing upwards of a dozen people <laughs> on one TV show. The thing about that show is, and it's really a testament to her, is that you forget that it's her in every role. Absolutely. And you know, at first, it's like, oh, it's a novelty for the first ten minutes or something. Like, or wow. m- maybe not ten minutes because you don't really see that the first ten minutes. But you know, you you start to get used to the fact that these characters are so delineated. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think of like. I forget the character's name, but the, the soccer mom. Allison. Know? Allison. Yeah. You know, she so perfectly embodies that character. Yes. And it, it's such a... Such a tonally different character. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, And from her personally as well. I mean, I know that yeah. is acting. But just right, to see that so back to back. It's acting know? on steroids. Yeah. It's just this Olympic level. People mm. call it Olympic level. People have thrown every single adjective in the book at Tatiana yeah. Masani in this, in this role. And of yeah. course, she won an Emmy for it. People were clamoring for her to win an Emmy long before she did. Yeah, it was amazing that it took that. People long say that she should get six different paychecks for the for the show. I was because g- how do you how can you not? <laughs> That's true. I was thinking that throughout the interview, like you get paid seven times as much. I mean, why this. not? <laughs> and yeah, sitting talking to her, I was I was kind of just like, how 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 you yeah. really your brain really does trick you into thinking, oh, of course they're different people. Oh, I guess it's just triplets. I guess it's yeah. just triplets sharing that scene. And it's a role that has gotten her, obviously, all the attention that she deserves as an actor of her skill. Mm. And as she talks about in this interview, also several opportunities, including yeah. this uh, Boston Marathon bombing film called Stronger. Yes. Starring Jake Gyllenhaal, which we got to talk about a little bit as well. She's really, I cannot wait to see what she does next. Yeah. Well, the good thing is, is she's never going to be typecast. No. How can you possibly be? <laughs> she's like her be? first major huge gig. <laughs> Set that up from day one. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting, yeah. And and the way she was talking about um, Helena in particular, one of the clones mm. on the show, it did make me think like so many actors are yearn their whole lives for a role like that, for the opportunity to play yeah. a character like that. And the fact that she had that and four others like it on the show. Well, it's interesting to me that she still goes to for auditions and things like that. Yes. It's like, well, just watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know. Casting director people, just watch the show. Right. And she still goes to acting classes, which, yeah. I, as she points out, is very important. She actually just came from an acting class today. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or from yesterday. She biked over. She's very humble. And, yeah. you know, clearly it's working for her. She we knows. talked about that. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's, it's, touched, it's tied in with the, we talked a lot about fearlessness and about mm. how, using your fear and how to harness that. Yeah. Um, and like embarrassment and how embarrassment and fear are, are kind of tied together. Yeah, and using it as a window into Totally, and using it, uh, and... yeah, to be vulnerable and even maybe especially in an audition setting. Yeah. Yeah, really, that was definitely really a little... textbook stuff on how to be a great actor. Yeah, that was it was applicable stuff as well, totally. not just theoretical. You yeah. know, she actually uses that and yeah. So, we should probably stop blabbing on. We should. Yeah, we <laughs> got to just hear from her herself cuz yeah. she's amazing. Um wow, let's let's set up a real intro for Tatiana Maslany. Tatiana Maslany is a Canadian-born actor who has been performing in films and TV since age nine, before landing the roles of a lifetime in the BBC America series Orphan Black, created by Graham Manson and John Fawcett. She now stars in the Boston Marathon bombing biopic Stronger, opposite Jake Gyllenhaal, from Roadside Studios and Lionsgate. 
She has been hailed as perhaps the greatest currently working actor on television. Here it is, our interview with Tatiana Maslany. You are taking acting classes all the time. I haven't taken one for about a year now. Oh, this was, okay. This was the first time since right before, like, the day after the Emmys and the, f- day, and the week. Your Emmys? My Emmys. <laughs> after they named them after Congratulations. me. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> the day after that and then the week, the two weeks before we started the last season of mm. Orphan Black, I, I was back doing here that. doing another, a different acting class. Mm. And then, yeah, so it's been, it's been like a, well, under a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is this, like, is this like why you come to New York for that? Only for the exclusively classes? to learn <laughs> and to be schooled if I go see a musical or something like that. Oh, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. see some shows. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to do theater or some sometime soon? I would love to. Absolutely. I'd absolutely. I, there there have been a couple chances at it, but uh-huh. but it's just, I don't know, timing-wise, it's hard to, to block out the time, and, and, I, and yes. I always kind of want to be like fully up for no, that. You can't you do know? a Broadway show while you're playing six clones on no 12 clones on a show it's not physically possible <laughs> even if you're playing one character as the lead in a tv series yeah you're locked in pretty much totally yeah. totally you need to like focus on that yeah what was the chronology when we when did you film stronger i filmed stronger after season four okay um so basically i think i went straight from like the rap <laughs> i don't think i did i even go to the rap party of season four i don't think i did i think i went straight wow. to boston to boston and, wow. and was there then for two and a half months yeah yeah. And you had to do that thing where you you drop one character and you just pick up another character. Yeah, which I was like quite used to in terms of like Orphan Black really set me up for just being open to that shift constantly. But but I think the pace was so different because suddenly mm. I was I was coming into a, a film which was much more introspective, much more mm. you know quiet, calm, uh, simmering as opposed to kind of kinetic and like mm. really out energy. Um, yeah. And and getting to sit with a character for two and a half months was yeah massively different. Well, and a real person. Yeah, yeah. Which have you done that before? I'd done that one other time, but but in a in a kind of different way. I played mm-hmm. a woman in in the in this film called Woman in Gold, where Helen Mirren played yes. her later in life, and I played <sighs> her as right. a young woman. You spoke German. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, so that that was you know. The closest I ever got to playing. Gotcha. There was one other time, but but nobody who I've played has ever been alive and around yeah. and kind of accessible. So Aaron was wow. Aaron was there, and I, I got to chat with her a lot, and we did Pilates, and we how strange hung out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was. I mean, it's a massive responsibility that yeah. you know to know that you're carrying this story that means so much to not only these two people but the city and the world actually. You know, and that yes. people have so many perceptions of what mm. it is and trying to get to the nut of what it, what it actually is about. Yeah, well, and it's a story and it's a film that is that is trying to get at the the very human aspects of something that, of course, has has become and has had to become like a tragedy, like a national historical mm-hmm. tragedy. Mm-hmm. And it's it's interesting you said that it's introspective because I, I, I guess it is. It's just very character-driven. It's just very focused on you and Jake yeah, as, these, for sure. as these real people. Yeah, and I think... For me, my perspective on that, on the marathon bombing and and on the the lives affected, was much more of a headlines kind of thing. Absolutely, I saw pictures. Same. I saw you know, yeah. kind of flash these headlines and these images that that sort of keep it out of. Um, th- th- it's very sensational, you know, and totally. kind of massive. Yeah. And you don't c- kind of go to the 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 atomic and more like mm. the people and their lives and. You know how yeah. that changes their personal interactions, their personal relationships, how they move on from it, and in the face of this kind of focus on them and this yeah. um, idol idolatry, idol, yeah. idol, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Jeff walks down the street and people yell at him yeah. always. He's that you know, hero. still, yeah. yeah, for sure. That's so wild, especially the. You're right that of course we have to. <laughs> the media has to sensationalize, mm-hmm. and we have to receive it that way. Mm-hmm. But it takes those stories. It takes a film, or like like a cinematic experience, mm-hmm. or something like it, to like get us to think about the 
the human part of it, which it yeah. should just be thought of as the human part of it. Yeah, you know? but we're so used to, the, I think, numbers and, and mm-hmm. kind of stats and that, that sort of like... The breaking It's news. almost easier to digest it yeah. than kind of going into what what Jeff and Aaron went through, which was right. at this moment when they were both healing and suffering in such a massive way, yeah. being put into this position of being icons for, for strength, yeah. you know, which is so contradictory to how they were feeling and what they were actually totally. experiencing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you said it was a huge responsibility mm-hmm. to play this real person who you interacted with. And yes, you're playing like a fictionalized version of her. Yeah. But is it, I want to ask you about fear. Oh, <laughs> wow. Like, I could talk about fear forever. <laughs> I think of you as a fearless performer. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear about how I'm wrong. Yeah. I mean, I feel like fear guides everything I do. Sure. Um, yeah. In that it's like, it's like the buzzing that I know that I'm in a place that is new and that's probably going to be more creative than than a than a than a known place. Um, I've had mm. so many acting teachers. That's kind of the mantra is like moving towards fear. And for me, hmm. embarrassment, fear, all of these things kind of coexist at all times for me, creatively, personally. Embarrassment. At all, yeah, <laughs> all of it. Just like. <laughs> You know, kind of just a raw wound <laughs> walking uh-huh. through the world trying to be cool and, uh, <laughs> you know, extremely sensitive and, and per- yeah. receiving of people's energy and all of that. So I feel like embarrassment lives like kind of on the – I'm always on the cusp <laughs> of it. Um, but as an artist, like that's where it's safer for me to kind of go into those places and, and allow those places to be where I live. You know, yeah. uh, I think David Gordon Green, the way he works is so much about throwing things at you that you're not expecting, about mm. keeping – he really I, – I felt so off kilter the whole film, mm. kind of um, like I was constantly in this sort of fog of, of the unknown, which I think Aaron is also experiencing. You know? Well, good. You can like harness that totally. Yeah. But but at the time, you're, I'm kind of like struggling with, uh, 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 do I just not know what I'm doing as an actor or <laughs> as a character? You know, where did those Whoa. things kind of cross over? So but, it's 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 the fear and the embarrassment, but also doubt. Doubt for sure. Wow. Massively. Yeah, but but also like I've done it since I was nine. So there are certain right. things that I'm like, okay, this is where I where I can kind of own own this and and know that this feeling isn't bad you know right. bad good whatever that sure, is sure, sure. but but it's not um, yeah it hopefully won't shut me down it's gonna only give me right yeah yeah you use the word safer to describe like you go to these scary places or you go to that yeah just dark uh, uncertainty i guess yeah and that paradoxically is like the safe space of, an, of totally. being an actor yeah. or else you're you're dead you're not doing anything you know yeah, i guess you're just uninspired and yeah. therefore uninspiring yeah and not sort of revealing anything different or unexpected like i don't know what you're gonna say to me right now yeah you know i can kind of have an idea of how this might go Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i but i don't know that right that's how we live you know we're constantly in the moment Um, yeah you know for me improv was like a massive thing i did for growing up and and sort of still is the thing that i key back into whenever Mm -hmm. i'm working and being whatever yeah and improv is all about fear or like or diving into the unknown yeah right yeah totally i can't wait to hear about how improv like in like infects your performances especially <laughs> like, a poise, black, like, like, like a poise like a disease yeah <laughs> is it is it safe to say it's like the foundation of your training um you did dance as well i did dance from a very young age which is also like just very much in your body but there totally. is choreography there so there's a technical kind of aspect to it but mm. but mm. you know improv does have structure and improv does have like rules so to speak yeah um but but what I loved about it was just that it was this pure creative space that mm. always had that tension of absolute life yeah. and death fear in it. Um, <laughs> you know, very public yeah. embarrassment, very public. High stakes. Yeah, yeah, so high stakes. I mean, the the feeling before I would go do an improv show still is like, why are you doing this? You're going to die. Go, yeah. Like run, <laughs> shaking, cold, like all organs shutting down. Like Whoa. it's totally extreme. It's so yeah. unnecessarily extreme. It's something that every actor should try or at least totally. give a shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the most exciting thing. And yeah. it's fascinating to me this idea that you, the dance training and the improv training sort of go hand in hand as one being structured and choreographed mm-hmm. and therefore like training yourself 
technically Mm -hmm. and the other is like letting it all go Mm -hmm. almost and yet like when you go to dance like my most joyful free place is out with my friends dancing Mm -hmm. or in my room dancing or whatever you know like that's that's where i feel kind of fearless and and uh Hmm. like like my truest self Hmm. which is kind of an explosion of all of those the training or whatever, but it's just like pure yeah. expression to Explosion me. of it. Yeah. That's so right. Without words, which is a great thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, people say like to really find out who a person is, you just watch them dance. Like, how is they, that right? How they dance is like how it distills uh-huh. who they are as a person. Almost. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love the idea that it explodes everything in you and you mm. to, it kind of throws everything out the window. Yeah. Any like cleverness is gone. The cleverness. You don't need to be clever and huh. to be... Whatever. Which in my mind is tied to, you were saying about being cool, of trying to be cool. Yes. Um, (laughs) Because you can't, I guess you can't really try to be cool when you're tapping into that, like, the embarrassment and the, like, nerdy enthusiasm. Totally. I feel like that's, like, the the passion. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're, it it seems to me that there's a real culture of, like, I don't care. Totally. And I don't feel. To- and I don't. Completely. You know. And or, I'm. Uh, yeah, I fall into that all the time. Yeah, it's and it's so not true. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. And all art can't be that. It can't be that cynical. No. Then what happens? Like, so much cynicism. Yeah. So everything becomes meaningless or something. Yeah, and I think that's why I was also kind of afraid of doing stronger was because cynically I was Ooh, like, yeah, this this film could end up being one of those films that we've all seen before. But because the script was mm. so raw and different and didn't kind of go to those really like cliche places, no, totally. like it stayed in kind of really gray, difficult territory. Yeah. Oh, it avoids you know. sappy. Yeah. Yeah. Which is hard, I think, to do in I writing so and too. directing a film like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there a difference between um, being cool <laughs> in the public space and mm. being cool like as an artist? Like yeah. you gain this cult following and you win an Emmy Award. Mm. And in interviews, like, do you have to project, like, a version of yourself that's, like, cooler or, like, uh, less authentic? Or is that also <laughs> performance? Like, I mean, I, I feel like there is an aspect of performance to it, for sure, uh-huh. that's kind of, like, um, I feel quite comfortable with you, but sometimes it's, like, you know, a version sure. of me that... Yeah, that or it's like dance monkey dance of like totally. Yeah. or you know, people have a certain perception of you, and and mm-hmm. and th- there's an aspect of um, m- my work because of Orphan Black that has become important to, you know, like a lot of young women yes. in the LGBT community mm-hmm. and young men as well, and um, you know, there's an element of of being aware of that that responsibility and also that what I say will matter to them mm. and will matter to me because of how it affects people. And you know mm. what I mean? So there there are certain considerations in terms of that because um, I'm lucky to have a, a voice and a exactly. platform, you totally. know, and I don't want to squander that or, or right. um, I don't know. Yeah. So there's, there's different yeah. versions of it, you know, whereas in right. art, it's more um, throw your <laughs> the image is throwing my poop at the wall <laughs> but do you know what I mean like kind of like your messiness apt, and yeah. like yeah like that's what it feel a little bit more uh the 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 kind of uninhibited uninhibited yeah. un, un unmannered un you know mm. contained stuff yeah ah so so you're throwing your poop at the wall <laughs> yes and then are other people or are you yourself trying to do the restraining thing of like you go big and then and you then you Bring a performance back in, or you? Yeah, I mean, your choices down. I feel like that that idea can be simple as well. Can be small. Um, oh, okay. It do, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm like ah, in yeah, every moment, sure. but but just that there's like, um, you know, stillness can be just as a f- oh, frightening. Yeah, totally. And and you know, just silence or listening mm-hmm. can be just as vulnerable making as totally. making a big spectacle. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think it's both both ways really. Yeah, but I I can't I can't I can't understand when you talk about listening on that specifically in Orphan Black because so many times you're listening to yourself and it just boggles my mind and I can't like yeah. our brains are actually incapable of being like those are the same person talking to yourself <laughs> right and so in my brain you're not Tatiana you're not Tatiana certainly right you're just Sarah and Allison or just Sarah and right like well that's cool 
But I guess I'm. I we got to get into the tech, like the technical aspects of sure. like how you do what you do. Well, on that's the show. that's. I mean, <laughs> that's like a collision of so many different people mm-hmm. firing on all pistons. Like in terms of. The, the technology is such that we yeah. actually believe it and the camera can move so we actually feel the space and totally. we don't feel like we're locked off in yeah. a special effects shot. Right. Um, and also I have, you know, I worked with an incredible scene partner in Catherine Alexandri who was my clone double. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And she's an actor and thank God she's the kind of actor she is because she's mm. hyper technical, so aware of those things, but also available emotionally beyond like beyond... Oh, Beyond me, in so many respects, in so terms there's of the listening. Oh, massively, yeah. and so I, I think as we kind of progressed throughout the seasons, we realized how how vital Catherine was and how important that relationship was. Because mm. I can feel the difference between scenes where I was working opposite a tennis ball <laughs> versus working yeah. opposite Catherine. I imagine. You know, yeah, yeah, understandably. So, I so feel like you can't make as many choices with a tennis ball. It just doesn't give back. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just kind of sitting there on a stick. and <laughs> It requires more work on your part. Yeah. <laughs> just like more imagination or something. Totally. Yeah. Which is like where the improv stuff comes in because you're kind of always creating circumstances mm. that don't actually exist and, and costume mm. or set or, you know, sound or w- whatever yeah. um, that doesn't exist or a character opposite you that sometimes, you know, you do monologue work in, in improv and you're talking yeah. to somebody who's not there, and whatever, or you're endowing your scene partner with who they are when they walk in the room. So, you know, well, okay. there's all this creation that yeah. happens and, and thank God I enjoy that stuff and, you know, could could it could kind of give this tennis ball like pants. <laughs> <laughs> Starting with pants. pants. And, a, and a wig. Uh, uh-huh. but, but, but no, Catherine was like my saving grace. You I know. see. Yeah. Well, the, I wanted to ask about that endowing of the scene partner because mm. that is, I guess, to an extent, it's a, it's a responsibility of an actor playing a character to think about how that character feels about the person they're addressing. Mm-hmm. But do you ever did you ever get tripped up of like I'm addressing this other person that I'm also playing? Mm. Um, I guess the question is like, how do you drop one when you mm-hmm. switch to the other? That that I mean. I remember when I first got the part that I t- said to John and Graham, who were the creators, I was like, I'm going to need a room where I can go uh, off and do some yoga between characters. They're mm. like, you're not going to have any <laughs> time. Like, no. <laughs> no. That's <laughs> like, just how it works on it's a TV not set. Happening. Yeah, no. Oh, like, wow. you're literally going to jump into hair makeup. So, wow. so the time I had to go back to my trailer, change out of my clothes, and go back to hair makeup and have like an hour and a half where, where I was being changed transform? over. That was, that was the time. And so that was either kind of settling into um, different music or mm. uh, starting to just play a little bit in the chair in terms of voice. Like Crystal, mm. who is like the manicurist, mm-hmm. who's quite far from me. Nobody I'd sure. ever get to play before or probably ever again. But <laughs> she, you know, she was somebody who required a little bit of like playing, playing sure. in the chair while I was getting makeup done, feeling what the nails were doing to my hands, oh. what the eyelashes, the weight of these eyelashes, how that changed cool. my gaze, the lips, like all of this stuff that I can kind of externally and internally kind of gotcha. start to play with. But I don't know. It, it was always different. It was different for every sure. character. I'm sure some characters are more external than others. Yes, totally, totally. Which were the most internal? The most internal were... Uh, I'd say Sarah oh, yeah. or um, yeah, Helena, too. Yeah, the master too. of ceremonies. She's yeah, like, you know, she's kind of the drone. She has to transform the heartbeat. into yeah. other people. So exactly. Like, she has to sort of be a neutral, more neutral. Yeah. But um, but Helena, too, I were, uh, even though this is an external experience, for the first time I put the wig on. Yeah. And I opened my eyes and saw her. And her reddish. The um, red eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And this kind of like bleached out. Mm hair I was just like started crying because I just felt her somehow mm. there was something about seeing myself wow. look like that yeah that I was like oh I just could connect to her internally even though it was an external image right, right. you know that's kind of the gift of, of and that then hair you makeup. throw the accent on top of that yeah and then and then I work it sometimes you know my dialect coach John Ellis would come into the trailer and we would start just playing with mm. with sounds uh mm-hmm. and yeah, it was really like 
the feeling of being on stage in an improv show and somebody suddenly gives you something totally different and you have to switch character and you just kind of go, okay, yes. Like, yes. you know, you can't say no, no, no. Yeah. And you can't kind of go, I don't know if I can, or I don't yeah. know if I'm ready. You just kind of have to be. And, it's all and positivity. It's all totally. Like, and just like acceptance of like, this is not only my job, but this is like a total joy that I get to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you feel that joy. Yeah. And like, as yeah. a kid, you do that constantly right you know you're like i'm a dinosaur mm. no now i'm a doctor and mm -hmm. now i'm the dinosaur's doctor at the same you know what i mean like totally. you, you you do all those things at the same interesting time. so yeah a lot of improv and a lot of just being an actor and being and using your imagination is like yeah. they say getting in touch with your inner child i guess you could totally say. like the unsocialized part of you that goes like this Ooh. is crazy or this is not possible yeah or... like suppressing the super ego is sure it? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah totally <laughs> but how do you do that you mentioned yoga for one thing. Does oh, that yoga! Help? Yoga puts me so in my ego. I'm like, or like super. It's like oh. yoga makes me so mad. Like I, I can't do it. <laughs> gotcha. At, at the time, I was like, that will really bring me. It'll back. It'll center you, but no, 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 no. Because no. then it gets you too in your head, maybe. Totally. Yeah, like yeah. dance is a big one for me. Okay. Dance and and play mm -hmm. and and just, just like play. Yeah. I don't know. You know, walking on set differently. Walking playing with the crew sometimes. Like I had mm -hmm. amazing crew that we had this awesome props guy called Steve Stack who's um, <laughs> so amazing. And he would like give me props sometimes as Helena because he loved Helena. And he would give me like, he gave me like this pipe once. That makes sense for her. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like random things that become part of her like totally, world. <laughs> totally. And he like handed me this pipe in this scene where we had 30 minutes to shoot it. And it's where I'm, oh, wow. I'm impregnating this guy with uh -huh. cow semen, yeah. as you do. As you do. It's a normal <laughs> as, show. As we all have done. I was on done. TV. No yeah. big deal. <laughs> it's really tropey, actually. <laughs> um, but I'm doing this scene, and he gives me this pipe. He's like, I don't know if you want to use this. And I was like, cool. How I don't know how he, this is going to work. great. But it ended up being in the scene. It Amazing. ended up being on this one line that kind of flipped it on his head. Mm. And, and it was just like things like that, that kind of interchange of collaboration that's just like you can't. Yeah. Can't get better than that. It's almost better that that someone's throwing that at you than not in a way because it gives you totally yeah. And whether you use it or not is sure is up you to can, that moment. Yeah. But mm. but but it's just that that generosity of like mm -hmm. the gesture is, is like so it has cool. to make sense in the character totally based on your backstory. Yeah. But there's also the thing, and I've asked actors who are on long running shows about this. Like when you learn more about your character's backstory, mm -hmm. um, we learned a lot about Beth, who of course yeah. you didn't really. You didn't really play before the first five minutes of the of the pilot or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. That was an interesting case of like learning retroactively about a character. Yes. And do, I mean, are you ever worried about falling into the trap of like, oh, I've made this choice as a, as a character, and now something in the writing has contradicted it, or is in uh, twisting it in a different way? Yeah, I mean, I, I maybe intellectually sometimes that that happens, but mm -hmm. but I feel like as human beings, like we're so contradictory anyways. We do something that is completely hypocritical to what we mm. believe or what we say or what we actually want or whatever, that I think it can all exist. I mean, hmm. you know, if, if you know, I found out that like something, about, if I found out something about Beth that I didn't know when I first started, mm -hmm. it's just, it just adds. It just it adds. adds dimension, you gotcha. know. None of, none of us are, are one Right. One quality or like one character. Like on one set arc that's like mm -mm. building. Yeah. No. We no. like wind, we're, as people in our lives, we wind around and we circle back and we. Totally. Yeah. And I think I, I heard about this thing where there was like computers and human beings were tested against each other to see um, if, if it could be detected whether this was a human or a computer. So they had to do this certain mm. amount of tests or something like that. And the one thing that separated mm. computers from human beings, the one thing that computers couldn't do was irrational behavior. Mm. So they couldn't replicate human irrational behavior. Like mistakes and yeah, mis stupid. Totally, yeah. or like whatever whatever oh. there is in us that, that makes us do contradictory things. Which like shouldn't be there for, yeah. <laughs> for yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So that's I kind of like, always love leaning into that too, you know. Right. That's very Orphan Black. That's a very it's Orphan totally. Black example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, which clone is most like you? Ooh, I don't know. I guess maybe Cosima is closest mm -hmm. to me in, in terms of kind of um, her energy and, and her sort of fascination with people. Mm -hmm. and she also was quite 
as much as she's like open, she's guarded and mm. yeah, kind of vulnerable and sensitive mm-hmm. too. So yeah, I think. Do I'm, you ever do that thing as an actor where it's um, you're measuring like from degrees from yourself of like, oh, this character is the most opposite of me. And mm. therefore, you've, I don't know if you have to work harder to get there mm. or if it's more like, well, they're not me at all. And therefore, you do those external factors or you yeah. you get into it some other way. I feel like maybe this is like my laziness, but I've never <sighs> felt so far from a character that I'm like, I don't understand. Like, I've never felt no, so. Yeah. I, I feel like there is some kind of un- human understanding where it's like there is a link. There's always a link, even if it's playing Helena, who has... Mm. you know been raised as a as an assassin and has never been loved and <laughs> you know what i mean like totally. all these factors that are so completely different to me mm-hmm. and yet playing her i was like oh this is this is who i am this is how i eat this is mm. like cool. you know there's aspects of it that that allow me to reveal something about me that is mm-hmm. that is true of this character as well you know wow. and that that's yeah. maybe something like i've never gotten to play that character before and I no. you know but but <laughs> somehow peeling her back you I mm-hmm. find something that I can connect to always mm-hmm. I've never felt so alienated from a character that that I'm like this doesn't connect this doesn't compute you know and I guess like you were saying you you can't say no you can't ever be like Mm-mm. and her, part of that is the <clears throat> responsibility of, of leading a show like there's a lot of people who are kind of counting on you just simply as the lead of a of a being, having taught billing. Like, yeah, totally. Series. Totally. And to like just set the, the standard of yes and the standard, the standard of, of, you of know, yes. and like mm. the the standard of play or whatever mm. it is, you know, I, I like the, the lead actor does have mm. a massive effect on how a show, yeah. you know, how feels on the day. And, and I know first season I was in such a panic scream of fear. <laughs> You know, that I was just like, like Uh, barely spoke to anybody. And that must have been, it was an intense first season, you know. Kind of thrown in the deep end, like. (laughs) Totally. Yeah. Like, no clue what I was getting into at all. Well, okay. And you've also described on the cover of Backstage Magazine, which Uh is on the cover of several years ago. Yeah. um, These transitions between characters that you were given, where you have like an hour to get into makeup for a different character. You said that for your audition or for your many auditions mm. for the role, of course you don't get an hour between characters. No, you get like, like, cool, switch, switch. move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you do it? That That's really where like the improv, like the theater sports thing came yeah. in. Um, mm. And just pff, n- not thinking too much about it. Mm-hmm. And, and like preparing so hard before yeah. I got there sure. in terms of who these women were and and what keyed me into them. And it did end up being like a piece of clothing or like just one little item that kind of yeah. gave me that, I guess maybe that split second where I could be putting it on and just be like, all right, this is wow. the offer. Is this like jean vest for uh-huh. Sarah? Uh-huh. And now I can be her, be there, you know? Yeah. But that, that audition was so much fun because it was just like wow. total play and yeah. completely uncharted for me. You know, like that, that I feel like only happens if you do like an audition for SNL or a sketch thing Absolutely. where you're having to switch between, totally. you know, and comedians do that. Like I always look at yeah. like Jordan Peele. Yes. His, <laughs> his character work is ridiculous. Yeah. He's unbelievable. He's yeah, totally. so committed. It's fully outside in, fully. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, he's one of the best actors on TV. Yeah, like, cause totally. he's just completely transformed and and he does all the like physical stuff and the vocal stuff and yeah you know but that i feel like it's op- often in sketch that you see that kind of stuff exactly you know? well, i was mm. just thinking i didn't it, it didn't occur to me that um this is very much a drama or yeah. like it's very much a drama and it is rare i think to have an audition that's that's like SNL. No, yeah, like, exactly. Or like anything that's not a sketch show. Yeah, right. Yeah, no it's it's it was definitely not like be the hot girl who, <laughs> who like <laughs> carries a gun. Like it was like, <laughs> can you be the the weirdo like uh, suburban housewife and like yes. the you know streetwise grifter and like you know basically <laughs> yeah. all these weirdos. You yeah, know, which is such a treat. For, oh, such like, a treat. I'm stuff. sure. Yeah, yeah. But so you're going through that audition process, but don't you also have you must as an actor you must have the nagging nagging thoughts of like, 
what happens if I get it? What happens if I don't? I really want to get it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be devastated if I don't. Mm -hmm. Do you have to block all those thoughts from your mind? Especially in the room, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I... I was dreaming about the character, about Sarah specifically, yeah. in that like train platform. As soon as I read the script, cool. and as soon as I knew I was auditioning for it, I was like, "Oh my god, I can't get this image out of my head." Mm. I love this. I just want to be in that moment. Cool. I want to be there. So I definitely was like, ah. "Like if you want it, if I don't get this, I'll be really upset." Sure. But at the same time, I was also like, "There's a large chance I'm not going to get this." You know, <laughs> I don't look like a lead in a TV series. I'm. <laughs> You know, I've never played adult women before. Like, I'd only played oh, teens or people right. 10 years younger than me. And you weren't a name actor. I wasn't a name actor. No. I'd never led a series like this. No. You know, so there were so many things that, that just didn't make sense. So for me, it was also just like, but how cool is it that I get to go into a room for mm -hmm. an hour and do this? Mm -hmm. And And honestly, that was... I may be saying that because I've done the show now. I can be like, honestly, that Looking hour back. was like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but it was amazing. You know, it yeah. really was a, a dream to get to just do that. And yeah. and loaded with fear and loaded with uncertainty. And, and I had to rollerblade there to get my breath going because I'm like, if I go there and I've like gotten out of a taxi and uh -huh. I'm worried that I oh don't look right and I'm worried that I I'm not pretty enough or whatever, then I'm going to just screw this up yeah. and not have be fun. Distracted. Yeah, yeah, be yeah. distracted. So it was just like, you know, do something that's going to, again, like take me down a few notches so I can't feel like a cool person going in there. There you go. And I'm not trying to be cool. Uh -huh. I'm just myself and I'm yeah. breathing and I'm going to play. You're going to tap into the fun and not the nerves because the nerves exactly. are going to be there they'll always be there wait yeah. and so you bike to this interview too you're I always just like rolling. To this <laughs> oh yeah, i bike to this, to this interview yeah yeah <laughs> so you're always just like moving on the go you. To... <laughs> <laughs> you just want to like sweat a little bit before an experience yeah. to get you like in your body maybe or yeah like... just like yeah, level, get that. level down a little because the sitting stiff in an audition waiting room for three hours can't be it requires an amount of focus that i can't even oh god i don't know how actors do it no, I went an into an call. audition recently, and I yes. hadn't done an audition in person for a long time because I'd been sending just tapes Yeah, living in Toronto. Oh, cool. I want to ask about your auditions. Yeah. Oh, God. It was like <laughs> I walked in, and, and there were all these women there who looked um, like women and like grown-ass people who <laughs> were dressed like I, – I was just like – I was in sneakers and – I was just like, yeah. whoops. Oh, whoops. right. Oh, whoops. <laughs> like, I forgot that that was a thing. And, and then yeah. suddenly I got really nervous oh. because I wasn't, I was mm. like, le like comparing myself, which is just such a stupid thing oh, to do. Yeah. That's you like know. the wrong kind of outside of yourself. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. Like not artistic whatsoever. Yeah. So I like went off into a corner and luckily had an hour because I got there so early, like a oh, super gotcha. nerd <laughs> and had there an hour go. to like breathe okay. and just like move. And physically. tap into that just like let it go just yeah get back in touch like with the it. fear's there it's gonna be there but like yeah. let's not make it about what i look like or any yeah. of this outside crap yeah and like am i breathing you know yeah well and if you if you squish the fear down and ignore or try to ignore it what i mean that's not gonna do great things no it's terrible yeah it's terrible like i i enjoy fear going into an audition because i feel mm. like it, it just is like it's a vibration that's moving through me. If I was yeah. numb, I wouldn't. Why am yeah. I there? You and know? that orphan, those orphan black auditions, that was the fun part of it. Was like yeah. how high stakes it was. Was almost like why it was fun. Totally. You had that shot. There's like fifty execs well. in a board. Mm, they're not fifty. It felt like fifty. Yeah, it was sure. a tiny room. It was probably this big, but <laughs> you know, it felt like this yeah. wall of people who I'd never met before, who were all de deciding what was gonna yeah. happen. And then I, it's interesting you. Your work on the first season of, of that show is absolutely stellar, and I can't believe I'm talking to just one of you, and I feel like going into this, I was like, am I going to be talking to six people? But it's like <laughs> I'm talking to a seventh person because you're not like any of them. Uh, uh -huh. But I like when actors admit that they were stressed or they were terrified or they were... Totally. That they look back on a performance and go... <sighs> No, well, like first season, I just, yeah. see a I just see fear, the whole thing. I can't watch that season without being like... Like my jaw You're the gets only tight. One to see it. Though. My stomach get well. I don't know. You know, like everything's <laughs> tight when I watch it. I just can't. But that's interesting too, because as the show goes on, the the clones become closer yeah. emotionally. Yeah. So it almost works that they're not uh, 
listening as much or connecting as much yes. at first, maybe? Yeah, that there's that they are um, they are who they are, and they haven't yeah. met each other, so there isn't that mm. kind of transference yet of mm. sisterhood. And yeah, um, and you don't have an arc to play with at the beginning of an arc. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is a great way to excuse a bunch of tension and rigidity <laughs> no, and fear. No. no, 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 no. It's just stunning. It's just stunning. And people oh. have thrown every superlative in the book to try to describe your Olympic level <laughs> acting. Um, which begs the question: How do you? What follows being the lead on any show, mm. on any successful show, and winning an Emmy? Mm. What follows a, uh, the role of a lifetime? In your case, is the roles yeah. of a lifetime. Yeah. How do you move on? I, I mean, this this year was awesome because I, I took space and I just yeah. went like, I took time to actually grieve the end of that huge- To grieve, cool, yeah. You know, part of my life. Yeah. That, that everything shifted and changed as, as an artist and as, as a working person yeah. and as an adult woman, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I took that time, but then the, the most exciting thing that I got to do this year was um, my boyfriend, Tom Cullen, who's an actor as well mm -hmm. and amazing. And we've been together since just before From Black started. So he's mm -hmm. been, we've been through this journey together, both of us on, on different trajectories and, mm -hmm. and holding each other up. But he uh, directed his first piece, uh, his first movie this year. And I got to act in it. Mm -hmm. And Jay Duplass was opposite me. Oh, cool. Which Tom and I were like, huh? How did we do that? How That's did we amazing. get him? You know what I mean? This, like, Friend when of the Tom podcast, Jay Duplass. is he really? Yeah, he's been here. Yeah. yeah, he's he's amazing. And and Tom, when he like conceptualized this this story, of this script three years ago, he was always it was always Jay that he had in his head. Oh, cool! So like total dream come true for wow. us. But it was like a ten day feature film mm -hmm. called Pink Wall, which is about um, this couple throughout their their relationship and kind of at a th these these six different pieces of their lives together mm -hmm. um and and the process of it because it was 10 days i don't know if it's because it was 10 days but it was like That's highly short. improvised it's so short yeah like nobody does a feature in 10 days no. and we ended up having extra time because we were so ahead of schedule interesting then we added a whole extra day that was a, another sequence and hmm. i think the way tom worked and the crew worked um it was just like so creative and mm -hmm. so everybody was just there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we just did that in, shot that in Wales uh, a month ago. And oh, I'm cool. still like coming coming down gotcha. off of it. Yeah. So it's, it's just, about doing jobs like that, that, that stretch you in a different way and that. Totally. 10 days. I mean, that's like it's bizarre. Ridiculous. Right? Yeah. And yet it felt like this like lifetime of work that we'd done together. Cool. Because there was so, I don't know, it was just so. Uh, creative and inspiring for me to be part of that. And Tom, you know, working with, with him is at, at, at his first directing job, mm. seeing him come into that and how natural it was for him and how uh, generous he was as an as an uh, as a director and as, you know, collaborator was just like, it was That's so great. fun. Well, yeah. And you got to make your own work as an actor. You got to. <laughs> totally. Everybody's got to do it. Totally. And I like think. how lucky we are that we got to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how many couples get to get into the, the muck together like that you know? yeah to like do the biz together yeah and, and like have a per professional and a personal relationship totally that time. that aren't separate and yeah. that aren't uh in conflict with each other yeah um and if he, and if yeah. you you got together right before from black so he's been kind of an anchor throughout the, that whole absolutely i guess it's bookended now it's the beginning and the end of that experience mm -hmm. yeah for sure i mean it's there's so much noise that happens with, yeah. you know, uh, something hitting or, yeah. you know, a show hitting that uh, I, if I didn't have that grounding, sure. I would have been, I would have been sit up in that corner, like, <laughs> I don't know what, it's Helena. like, what's that? Like Helena. Like Helena, just hanging from the <laughs> ceiling um, the and eating donuts and sardines. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally. just, a, <laughs> it, 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 he's, he's been incredible, you That's know. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how does winning an Emmy change, I mean, everything, the career mm. opportunities, I mm. guess, personally? Like, does it change you as a person? Um, I, I mean, definitely professionally, you know, yes. there is like 
people are like, oh, that is a thing that I recognize. And yes. so there's something. Becomes like your title. Yes, right. Yeah. Weirdly. Yeah. You know, um, but it's it's very marketable. It's like, hmm. you know, all these factors that come in that sure. have nothing to do with our, our talent yeah. or our passion or our creativity whatsoever, hmm. but are a sellable thing, cool. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I take them kind of with a grain of salt. Like I, I kind of, I, I struggle with it. I really do. Yeah. Like I, I really appreciate and, and I'm so honored by, by that gesture and by that recognition. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I struggle with it because uh, how do you decide which is the performance of the year? Like, it's just like yes. bizarre to me. You know, right. it's it's a... <laughs> It's all very subjective. It's so subjective. Yeah. And it and it just can't I just can't hold on to that as like some marker of talent or of work or quality or yeah, anything. I you see. know, you can't look at your own work and say, Ah oh, yes, this was classified in some no. higher way because of some <laughs> and I was I rewatched the actual episode that you had submitted that you yeah. had won for, which yeah. I, I had forgotten that that's how it works where you win for one specific Yeah, episode. you have to like decide. Yeah. Which is which is the my most, most bestest, best, <laughs> like... <laughs> totally. Did you decide? I, uh, yeah, was that the yeah. Peaches episode? The one with, the one where Sarah kind of goes off the rails a bit? Um, Has like a yes. night, night of, a uh, dark night of the soul? Very dark night of the soul with Beth. With Beth. Yes. Yeah. It's still the Peaches episode to me because Peaches <laughs> performed in it. Do you know who Peaches is? No. She's this amazing oh. electro pop, like... Oh. Very, like... <laughs> audacious like cool sexy okay, cool. person okay and cool. she performed and we were all like ah! um <laughs> so i think that's what got me the emmy was just the peaches that. That, yeah. That's great. um yeah no i don't i don't know and it is that thing of like it's about the work yeah right it's not like that episode of that season it's not like season four of orphan black is like more important than others. It's just, I don't know. It's like what people's, people, I don't know. What, I don't know what yeah. does it, you know? Yeah. But, but like, it definitely has changed. Like, there's no way, you know, the Orphan Black itself has gotten me in the room with Jake Gyllenhaal exactly. and David Gordon Green. Right. There's no way anybody would have let me into that room otherwise, yeah. you know, or I'm doing That's a movie it, yeah. with Nicole Kidman <gasps> coming up, which is, <gasps> I love her so much. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. After this huge year she's had. Yes. Being in like 18 films and TV shows. Oh my God. And doing such brave, like, totally. I think she's, I I just admire her wow. so much. And um, that's great. a cool movie called Destroyer and I get to play with Nicole Kidman. And these are opportunities that, yeah, as you can't, you couldn't have gotten them before being the lead in the show and before no. winning an Emmy. So. Never. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not. And you're still auditioning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so wild to me when that happens. Yeah, but I, I kind of, I I like auditioning. I feel like I, yeah. like, go through the, the like, the, there's something about earn, earning a part. Do you know what I mean? Like, going yeah, in and, and doing handed. work. Yeah. Totally. Like, yeah. Stronger was so fun because I got to play with Jake in, in a room for an hour mm -hmm. and improvise and, and go off the page and you know, kind of suss each other out, feel mm. each other out, cool. throw things at each other, react yeah. in the moment, you yeah. know, and in in a obviously high stakes situation, but when you're working with another actor like him, yes. it just becomes about, you know, are we jiving and, and how, what are we yeah. doing? What are it's we making together? It's all about the jiving. It's all about the reacting. Yes. I think. Totally. And it's great if you can do that in an audition or, or with any scene partner who's like giving you it, that back. Oh, yeah. That's, That's key. That's like that's the base note of what it should be. Yeah, you know, totally. So often it it I think there's a weird idea that when I'm done talking, I just like turn away. <laughs> yeah, you know, or shut shut off. And I have worked with people like that for sure. Sure. Since, yeah. You know, I've I done it since I was has. nine. Yeah, and right. I've definitely done that to people. You know, mm. not knowing, not knowing what acting was, and and mm. and not knowing what generosity was. And, yeah. And yeah. What, you know, and and being unwilling to give um, because mm. of insecurity or self-consciousness. Or because you want to take. Because you want to take. Yeah. Because it's about emotion or it's about what's going on inside me and not, yeah. you know, which was what was so cool about working with Jay Duplass mm -hmm. was that mm -hmm. it was like all, all about reaching across whatever divide mm. we were in, whatever space we were in. And, cool. you know, being 
completely responsive to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. We should wrap soon, but the okay. we're backstage, as you know. Yeah. So we are all about the audition advice. Oh yeah. And the acting advice and just like the early career, like if you could go back in time and tell your younger self one thing you wish you'd known, what would that be? Um, breathe, let go of uh-huh. your jaw. <laughs> let go of your jaw. Yeah. <laughs> It's not about emotion because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I was so like, I was so good at crying that all I did was cry. <laughs> I'm like, if I'm not crying in a scene, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Do you know what I mean? This is because I started when I was nine. Yeah, and so yeah, you yeah. build these habits. But yeah, um, there's crying and then there's crying. Yeah. Is I cry. Is I crying? <laughs> I get to cry. To show off. Yeah, totally. Which is like. A turn off or some. Oh God! Like people shut off. That. They're like, yeah. we know, <laughs> like yeah. we get it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm. I. The advice would be different for me every day, but but mm. for me, it is about following, following the fear and um, <laughs> knowing it's there. Not being, not f- feeling like you have to be without fear. Mm. Knowing that it's always there, but being fearless in the face of it. So, mm. diving into it. And exploring it, and and un- unraveling what it is, and why, why this this thing is making you afraid, mm. and 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 uh, and going into that and exploring it because it's acting is a safe place to do that. I th- I feel like you know. Um, I guess it's one of the only safe professions to do that. Totally, we're so lucky we get to investigate that stuff. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, just like g- generosity. Love, you know, yeah. all of that stuff. And practice it. Practice in that, that. In yeah. that position. In totally. That, in that profession, you get to practice the, the art of listening. I yes, guess. The totally. Art of, like, generosity. And like never, I, I, I do continue to train with different teachers yeah. and like love that. And, 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 you know, that in, in itself is like a putting myself through an, an embarrassment because they're, you know, mm. in learning you have to give up that you don't know anything. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you have oh, to go, I don't know. Yeah. And so I'm going to receive from you what, yeah. what you know and take that in. and Right, because you can't just be like, oh, I've learned everything and therefore I'm done. Because then you are done. Then, It'll you're, never... then you're not. No, that's like so ant- antithetical to acting, which is just about humanity and yeah. And, and expressing those levels of it that, that you continue to unfold as you grow up and as you yeah. experience things. You get your life experience. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And keep taking acting classes is also your... Always, just, yeah. And a variety and like do you yeah. go for like the teachers that you know are going to push you in a... push you to that dark, challenging place. Yeah. Or, like, but then also mix it up and go to, mm-hmm. you know, try a different technique and dance and mm-hmm. sing and uh, do improv right. and... And paint whatever mm-hmm. whatever opens up the side of your brain that goes like I can't do that, you know. Yeah, do right. that. Go to that place. Yeah, yeah. This is awesome. It's so fun. We're so lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so the great. other thing is like little tat. It is fun. <laughs> Stop making it not fun. It doesn't have to. Yeah. Doesn't have to be not fun. No. Yeah. That's excellent. That was really full circle. <laughs> was Getting it? back to talking about fear and yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. I just think of you as just like the most fearless, grounded yet fearless. I don't know. Mm. And I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. Be sure to like, rate, and subscribe for more interviews from the front lines of the industry's awards races. In the Envelope is recorded at Lotus Productions and Hyperbolic Audio in New York City. Thanks, as always, to producer, editor, and all-around podcast whiz, Jamie Muffet. You can follow him on Twitter at JamieMusicNYC. You can follow me, Jack Smart, on Twitter at JackSmartWrites. Thank you, of course, to the team at Backstage, the most trusted name in casting. That's Peter Rappaport, Mark Stinson, Francis Ramos, Rowan al khatib and especially the astounding Casey Howe. For more awards and industry coverage, head over to Backstage.com. Thanks for listening. Tune in next time for another glimpse in the envelope. This is a little... <laughs> We're both on different oh, levels right now. Whoops. Um, how are you? I'm good. I just biked from Brooklyn. I did.
on a city bike. I do this all the time. And now I'm getting thing. like eaten by this chair. <laughs> What's it yeah. done? Yeah. Something happened. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Now we've, okay. I got it, I got it. Are we good? Yep. Is this, um, yeah, should, this, should I be taller? Here. I'm doing this. I'm okay. doing the little kid thing over here. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> <laughs> looking up. <laughs> I don't know which one is more precarious, which one's more vulnerable. <laughs> right. like, yeah.